Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Good evening everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. It's Friday. Um, I had a great week. I hope you guys had a great week. I think the Samson, the news hound, has packed us full with information, data, uh, stuffed our Discord chat room, our forums full. Uh, I was able to get to a lot of articles in the forum. So if you guys have the opportunity to come on in, check it out um, and see if you want to join us uh, for, for, for the future, please do feel free. Uh, www.patreon.com forward slash MM and crew and you'll find us. Um, of course, Samson, Gigi are uh, always helpful at different times of the day. Uh, Gigi's uh, definitely a rock star when it comes to um, greeting people. Her and Greg actually uh, help out a great deal. Um, obviously, we have our uh, dear Pompey Peter who uh, loads us on occasion uh, when he's not too busy out hunting. Um, uh, he steals that term from us, you guys. He uh, does do some audios on occasion, and those are a pleasure to have because uh, people like that soft touch. And so it's good. Uh, plus, it's quality information. Uh, don't get me wrong. Brilliant man. Uh, hey, look, what's going on in the news lately is uh, yesterday and the day before and today. Um, there's some good stuff. There's a article talking about uh, what's happening to the dollar is not a decline and the sanctions the Sudanese uh, cannot discuss with Biden. So basically what they're talking about, there's certain aspects of information that may or may not be talked about when al Sudani comes to uh, Washington, I think on the 15th. This expert says uh, his name is Safa al-Shamari. He explains what is happening to the dollar in terms of a decline or fluctuation in its prices, uh, ruling out that the prime minister will discuss the sanctions file during his visit to Washington. The sanctions file is, is there's I think about 14 banks, maybe a few more, maybe as high as 25 banks that have been sanctioned. And uh, they may or may not, you know, be the way that they are into the future. Um, that might be kind of an embarrassing uh, circumstance for those banks because they got sanctioned for probably doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. And they probably have record of that. I think that if you guys recall, there was some arrest warrants that went out for quite a few people uh, in the previous uh, to the Sudanese administration with under Kathimi that uh, have arrest warrants out for uh, the crime of the century, the theft of the century, whatever term you want to use. So anyway, those banks could have had a, could have, could have been part of that. And um, that might be tough for them to get over. We'll, we're going to find out. Uh, it isn't the focus of my study tonight, um, and nor do I think um, w we should be worried about it, to be fair, uh, because they already set up those 40 correspondent banks to do what? To help relinquish the use of the dollar so that they has populated currency swaps, if you will, with many different currencies, many different countries uh, for Iraq to uh, use for international trade um, because those countries are going to do trade. Uh, Japan's going to use trade. Uh, the United Arab Emirates, for instance, they're going to do trade with Iraq. So having their currency is on hand in those correspondent banks is, is definitely a mechanism that will probably be used. But remember, um, Iraq is to uh, cease and desist effectively with the multi-currency practices that uh, the IMF has requirements for. You're only supposed to use one currency for commercial use inside the country, which is going to be the dinar. Of course, that's what they started to do as of January 1st. Um, anyway, to move on, um, keep those things in mind because it'll probably come up again. It, you know, a lot of times that's just the way that this, the news feed flow flows. It says uh, they have about 220 to 230 million dollars per day that are running through these currency auctions. Uh, they were they, they said about 180 to 190. Now they're 220 to 230. You're going to find 230, 230. Uh, they're going to. We're going to see how that, uh, with the new system, it's a good thing. It's even higher than that now um, because it's legitimate. It's legitimate trade, uh, accountability, transparency, all, all those things the platform has. Um, the merchants, I, I would assume, have now become accustomed and probably realize there's going to be a lot more money to be made and that a lot of people are going to be able to share in that. 
as opposed to maybe maybe uh, a smaller portion of that political faction and or um, I don't know nefarious uh, had control over that they're not going to have that anymore. Uh, it goes the central bank governor acknowledged that what the U.S. Federal Reserve has taken are sanctions, so therefore the sanctions cannot be and will not be discussed by the prime minister with the American president, as America is a state of institutions, not a state of individuals. So he cannot intervene to lift or ease these sanctions. And the treasury, the, which is the executive arm of the Federal Reserve, is the one who takes these measures according to a certain data. So if al Sudan is coming to meet with the president, for instance, they can have discussions. Is it his job to do anything with respect to the U.S. Treasury? And that's what they're suggesting is that, no, it's the U.S. Treasury and down to the Federal Reserve's responsibility to do so. Uh, they go on to say that uh, pressure towards modernizing the banking system is still um, lacking to some degree. Um, they say it's because of strategy. This says the Parliamentary Integrity Committee will be hosting the Financial Department for Directors of the Raffinane Bank Rashid Bank and the Iraqi Trade Bank. Basically, I think what they're saying is that they're, they're looking at um, taking them from state run to private, and that's effectively the private sector. So they're probably working on that. I have a feeling they've been working on that for for many years. I, I don't know if it's 20, but it could very well be. <laughs> so. so basically, what I'm saying is suggesting that these auctions are going to stop as we know them. And they're suggesting they have a move. Basically, the quote is, the bank said it would stop the platform at the beginning of the year, which was early on the first, which we understood to be true. But then they say that then move to next April 1st. And so that's Monday. So let's see what happens with these auctions and see what, if they hold true. Because again, they, they thought that they were going to do it um, at the beginning of the year, uh, but here it suggests that they're going to move till April 1st. Um, and remember, they talked about it also back at the beginning of the year or prior to the beginning of the year that they would see that the auctions would stop sometime throughout the year, okay, uh, or by the end of the year. But here this article suggests that they've uh, have slated for a little bit sooner than the end of the year, which is good, really good. Uh, they told us they would finish up by the end of the year. Like I said, it looks like they're now sorting the banks and they're ready to stop the auctions. Um, I believe it's exciting times to, to be sure. They, they, if they're stopping those auctions as we know it, know it uh, something's going to change. So let's see if it holds true. And uh, we don't have a whole lot of time to find out. However, let's see. Uh, this article, it says, a parliamentary finance, we hope that the 24, 2024 budget schedules will reach parliament next week. And what are those about? Well, that's about the investments. We've, been, we've also talked about all that investment side of the budget is uh, where we ha are hoping that they start paying and dispersing money for budget allocations to do projects they need to pay for. It says they express hope that the budget tables will be sent to parliament next week. It clarified the size of the amount spent by the governance last year. Uh, basically, last year or in, and now they have had a, the number of projects reached to about 5,500 projects across all government governance, and they say it to the tune of about 49 trillion dinars. They spent da 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 da, you know, billions. I'm not going to get into all the, you know, complexities. They go here that say they say that the uh, finance committee is waiting for the budget schedule. So this is the parliament finance, because remember when it, it went to uh, the finance ministry, the council of ministers, we talked about the cabinet si situation uh, here, but they're waiting to get these budget schedules from like Al Sudani has said, they even had them held up for a period of time. Al Sudani's office uh, held them up with the, his advisors uh, for what? At the, at the end of the day, uh, they're ready, they're completed, and they'll be sent to the HOR. Why haven't they got there yet? Uh, it's going to be because they have to probably hold this stuff sensitivity-wise tight as the, to the chest until they're finally ready to let that go. It says the finance committee is waiting for the budget schedule for the government, and we expected uh, the government to vote on them uh, at its last meeting last Tuesday. 
Uh, apparently that's gonna have to wait because that was last Tuesday, but now they say it's gonna be next week. There are two paths that the budget takes in its approval. It's approval by planning and financing by the fin Ministry of Finance, as I told you, pointing out the 2024 budget will focus on the health, education, electric, energy, and housing sectors in order of priority. I like the part electric energy. We talked about uh, GE, uh, Vernova. Uh, we talked about Honeywell gas. So anyway, energy, housing sectors. We talked about millions of housing units, right? As uh, in, in or, And that was in order of priority. Health, education, electric, energy, and housing sectors are in priority. Uh, the mechanism for distributing budget amounts between governance is done through the population and poverty ratios. I think that if we all know that over the last few years, they've been consistently doing um, the national cards. Those national cards, in my view, are probably a big tool that will have will, uh, an emphasis or an impact on the census. Um, and they said they were gonna do a census before 2025, I think it is, but the fact is that they are probably a little further along than they, they uh, share with us because of the sensitivity of the nature of the beast, because the hydrocarbon law is going to be affected by that. So an exchange rate change is going to be affecting millions and millions of people. Uh, well, I don't know, it might even be billions if you think about it. They changed this, the, the real effective exchange rate of Iraq, and if they're going to be the savior of the financial world, as they said at the UN meetings, um, and the, uh, if they're the uh, restoring confidence, like they said in Davos, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth and so forth, uh, we can see that it will have a big impact on probably every single dinar holder in the world. Um, as far as uh, people, look, I understand it's a concern when you have trillions, trillions of dinar. And if the United States has, say, seven trillion dinar, and they, they bring it out to what they were in the past, um, effectively, they could pay off the debt. But would that ever really happen in that manner? Look, there's millions and millions of houses on the market. Do they all sell at once? No, they don't. They, they stay on the books for long periods of time. They stay on MLS for long period, periods of time. No different than you or me or anybody else. My strategy for selling into a market is completely different than maybe you. Small holders, they might wanna say that they have a few notes to go in and cash them and just exchange out, which is not a big burden, okay? Just because there might be trillions out there doesn't mean that those trillions will be in the marketplace at any one time. The liquidity of the global financial system is far larger than 37 trillion, as far as I'm concerned. Our debt in the United States obviously proves that it's bigger than 30 trillion, right? So anyway, the income, um, and GDP from all these different countries um, and the debt that they hold because leverage is leverage. Uh, it's pretty hard to simply just ans answer any, any one person's questions on YouTube or anywhere else for that matter to say that uh, there's not enough liquidity out there. Secondly, many of these countries around the world are moving towards asset backed and having fair level playing field. Uh, back in 2020, there, uh, I think it was April 6th, there's the FIMA, uh, F-I-M-M-A, Law Executive Order that went into place in the international law. And I believe the other one was the CML, um, Currency and Manipulation Law, which would probably be affected by Viet Vietnam big time um, in this particular instance. And that particular law was probably, I think, in place for that. But you know what? The Vietnamese dong is not my study. And all the other currencies that may or not rise with the tide, if you will, um, are not my study, but that doesn't mean I don't believe in that they that they're going to have an impact That Iraq's going to have an impact for instance the Vietnamese dong and uh, I don't know the Indonesian rupiah uh, You know the yen all of these different currencies many different currencies are going to go up or down But the bottom line is that they're all going to have impact from it, but liquidity wise, you know um, You've got to be careful because the United States has massive assets so, so does Iraq, they have massive assets. So think in terms of Iraq having massive assets, the liquidity that the United States has massive assets, uh, they have the largest amount of gold in the world, 
uh, and they, well, they might have some of the largest amount of debt, but they also have foreign reserves. So it's a really a complex issue. It shouldn't be a simple statement, um, answer me this, right? That's not fair. Um, it's actually uneducated to ask questions like that in, to, some, to some degree. Um, I'm not being rude, I'm just saying it, it, it's really a complex issue. And it's not my job to be able to answer all those questions. I'm trying to just guide everybody realistically through this whole situation. If, uh, if I had a Locke's phone number and able to call him, I could ask him that question directly. Um, if I could get through to the president or of the head of the uh, board of directors of the Bank of International Settlements or the WTO and or um, the IMF, um, US Treasury, um, I could probably answer that question a lot better. But the truth is, I think it comes down to simple word, massive liquidity, capability. Not everybody's gonna rush to the exit. Not everybody's gonna do that. And uh, it'd be foolish to think so also tap into it's a digital world so type in three trillion dollars okay and then push a button and text it to your partner or friend or whoever you your you know your neighbor and see how fast that happens digitally boom there's your money if it's backed and it works within their system uh, sounds like you'll have some liquidity no one is going to walk into a bank and come out with a million dollars in cash without having pre-approval. Nobody. It's just not going to happen that way. And I think there's rules in the United States of America and around the world that won't allow for anything more than, without having approval, more than 10000 in one day. So, uh, so asking the question, why, wh how are they going to pay for trillions in the banking system um, is probably not the right question. But anyway, we'll move forward. Prime Minister starting to prepare the 2024 budget schedules. We already talked about this, but the Prime Minister stresses on Thursday, local governments must make their efforts to enhance citizens' confidence while announcing the start of setting the 2024 budget schedules. We have talked about restoring confidence, didn't we? That was DeVoe. That was the largest financial entities on the planet talking about what? Iraq's going to help... It in be involved in restoring confidence. Prime Minister Al Sudani was involved in that. He was going to restore confidence to the largest banking entities in the world. And here, what is he doing to the Iraqi citizens? He's trying to make efforts to enhance the citizens' conf confidence in, in his country. He's mentioned that he's going to have the the dinar is going to be stronger than the dollar. Does that bring confidence? Sure. What the expectation is for the 2024 budget is what? The schedules and text. What's, what are they expecting from that? Their confidence to come for that for the citizens. If they raise the value of their currency with a real effective exchange rate, I think it'll bring confidence to the citizens. And all those citizens that are on the fence that are lacking confidence, they're going to finally realize, okay, it's time. Basically, he's stating, our goal is to serve our people, pointing out at the same time to begin setting the 2024 budget schedules. So our goal is to serve the people. There you have it. Serve them and serve them quickly, please. <laughs> I say that with a smile on my face. Um, so it says, among them are sanctions and exchange rates, the government's clarifications on many economic files. Again, it's the prime minister, but that's what he's talking about today. He says, while making it clear that the government is serious about changing and amending the salary scales for state employees and that stopping the central bank's initiative has made residential investment complexes a, mo a monopoly for the well-off. So he's, he's looking at making a change and helping um, bring uh, some uh, a level playing field, if you will. The prime minister's visit to Washington will be important. Uh, because America is an important player in the region. Um, we know that the um, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, Iraq, or Iraq is, has, or has had a session. We're gonna see that there's two, two articles that compete with each other, but in this particular case, we're just gonna leave it at that, that we know that um, Ministry of Finance has told us that they have a session and uh, move forward on that. But he goes to say that uh, um, the data uh, that Iraqi, the, excuse me, 
the data that makes Iraq's government re has required deal with the file of the relationship with Washington on the economic and financial levels, especially through the control of the American Reserve on Iraq's money from selling oil. Kind of a hard uh, translation with this one because it just doesn't flow very well to read. Uh, but the American Federal Reserve Bank has, uh, they have accounts, Iraq, money, oil, and I think they're going to be talking about that. Um, and I have a good strong feeling that um, Iraq's money has been in, in uh, the Federal Reserve and has been doled out for a specific reason and it's protection. That's my opinion. I've read up on it. If you haven't, I, I suggest you do so and you'll see what I'm talking about. The difference between the exchange rate of the, uh, the dollar against the dinar will be resolved soon through some measures that the government is seeking to implement. Okay, so the difference between the exchange rate of the dollar against the dinar will be resolved through some measures that the government is seeking to implement. What were they trying to uh, do? They remember, they were trying to bring confidence to the citizens. By what? If they uh, adjust the, the difference between the rate of the dollar against the dinar, that will be resolved soon. Sounds pretty good to me. We'll see how this works. He goes on to say, noting uh, the current crisis um, at this time is not a liquidity crisis for this particular instance, but rather the delay in the budget schedules, which we knew that they haven't been to the HOR for that vote just yet. It led to the existence of this crisis, which arises from the cessation of the conversion of dollars into dinars through the intermediary banks. Well, obviously we know that there's been changes to the correspondent banks and that uh, they're not and have not been able to circumvent the platform. So therefore there was some um, hard part for them was conversion, but not anymore. It sounds like they've, uh, or we're gonna find out that they have, they've, um, it's changed. There's a, a big difference in what was happening in the past in comparison to what they're doing now. Um, it says the Council of Ministers regarding raising the price of improved gasoline uh, and other package decisions, but they go on to say the most important of which was reducing the country's public debt through reducing, canceling some loans to reduce public debt to about $10 billion, meaning that the public debt is less than 10% of domestic product. So what they're saying is they're, they're moving to doing things and they're uh, creating an environment that's, that's beneficial for the citizens. Um, in this particular uh, portion of this article from the Prime Minister's advisor, uh, says that something during previous periods lost confidence in democracy, but there are signs of return of confidence and satisfaction that will emerge from the current government. So they believe what, that what they're doing is going to bring that confidence and satisfaction back to the marketplace, which is the citizens, in my view. And they're talking about made in Iraq slogan. Now remember, we talked about that the other day. We talked about their assets, 16 to 17 trillion or so, um, because they have so many assets. So what are they going to do with those assets? Remember, they said they were going to do man manufacturing. And so here, this particular par portion that talking from the, the prime minister regarding the made in Iraq slogan, um, the, the prime minister's advisor stresses that it's a national demand for the government, which is very serious about preserving the hard currency and developing the Iraqi economy. Noting that the current government announced for the first time that it will guarantee the investor through sovereign guarantee. And this is an encouragement to make for Iraq, which possesses raw materials necessary for what? Industries agriculture, everything, right? And the evidence is in even the cement industry, which has succeeded in achieving self-sufficiency in Iraq. Didn't we have a little audio or video, excuse me, talking about specifically that I think it's the IFC and component of the, of the World Bank invested in a company in cement? Why? It's because it's materials. It's going to help build this development road project, housing, infrastructure, all that stuff. And here again, this is the slogan, made in Iraq. They're gearing to build industrial parks, industrial cities, if you will, to do what? To exploit all their own natural resources and sell them to the world. So they're not, they're not having other people come in and do it for them or take, them, take the raw materials out of their country to do that. They're gonna do it in the country. 
So when that back to that liquidity aspect that I was talking about when it comes to creating the environment to have the value to support the value of their currency, this is part of it. The non-oil monies coming from the bank, I mean, from the, from the borders, the customs and stuff, that's going to go to support the value of their currency. That's what's going to pay for that money. They're going to take that money back because they'll be able to afford to buy it back. It's, it's, it's complex. It's not, it's not one easy answer. But let's see how it turns out. Um, changing the salary scales. We'll be raising the salaries of employees and not reducing them. Okay, we move forward. The government's biggest priority is the localization of pharmaceutical industry. So look, they have a lot of different chemicals. They have a lot of different stuff. So they're going to start producing, which will save them about $6 billion a year. They're going to produce their own medicines because they have the, the raw materials to be able to make those medicines, I guess. Uh, establishing factories requires financing, uh, fa uh, protection, security, right? Marketing, marketing. Interesting, huh? All right. And the government helps finance the project f uh, from being importer competition in addition to assistance uh, and again, marketing. So the pharmaceutical industry needs successful commercial propaganda that gets rid of the idea that foreign production is better than Iraq. Therefore, we need good marketing and the change uh, and change this idea about Iraqi product in order for these projects to succeed for Iraq. Uh, they are doing this because the fact is, is that, again, they need to get all their manufacturing back up and, up and running again. It, they've been dormant for 20 years almost. And so uh, they're at that stage now where that they're full-fledged going for to do it under the slogan, Made in Iraq. So look, the exchange rate is clearly expected to change. The parallel market is basically going to go away as we know it. They're going to have uh, businesses that are, that are going to get sovereign guarantees. Um, what are they going to have? They're going to get a strong foundation so that they will come in. It's less risk. Iraq is as risky as you know, right? But they told you that they're going, they need to have security but they're going to have that security. I'm not so sure the security that they, they, they think they're gonna have without having the United States and the coalition forces without a strong bilateral understandings uh, because investors want to know that they have security. They have those sovereign guarantees are a big part of that. So we'll see what happens at these meetings come the 15th of April, but I'll, I'll tell you this, most likely what Fahoud is saying and Taif Sami Al, uh, Al Sudani, Al Alak, um, all, all those folks in the Ministerial Council of Economics, uh, they're working their tails off to make sure I think that they're A, ready, or if not done well before Al Sudani shows. Because if he's going to come to town and he wants bargaining, if he has a bargaining chip, I'm pretty sure um, a, a real effective exchange rate is going to be one of those bargaining chips. And if it's on the table long before he arrives, the, so that it can settle, it can get re, be uh, uh put through the marketplace in a fashion that uh, puts him at the table, uh, he, he probably will be in the driver's seat. So we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I hope all you guys are. Um, Iraq Central Bank Currency Auction. Here's another positive sign. It says that $254 million uh, Iraq Central Bank Currency Auction hits 250 more four million signaling economic vitality. Well, how is that? I thought these auctions were terrible. Well, not under the, under the present tense of how they're being run at this stage. Um, they have accountability. The merchants are doing what they're supposed to, they're doing, the, they're doing what they're supposed to. They're using the proper platform. Uh, they, they know their customers. So it says the Iraq Central Bank conducted a currency auction selling over 254 million to stabilize the dinar, a strategic move reflecting economic resilience. It goes on to say the Central Bank of Iraq conducted this currency auction. He says that this, this event underscores the country's ongoing efforts to stabilize the currency and bolster the economy. Well, 1310 doesn't bolster anything as far as I'm concerned. However, uh, doing things properly, doing international trade properly, um, will bolster the economy. A real effective exchange rate will bolster the economy. So he goes on to say that uh, 
They, they did this auction primarily aimed at enhancing balances abroad through transfers and credits. Uh, a significant portion of these sales amounting to about 97% was allocated for this purpose with a smaller segment directed towards cash transactions. So Iraq again is using the uh, electronic platforms for payments, et cetera, moving towards a cash less uh, society, which uh, here again, it's directly impacts t less cash transactions, more, more efficient, uh, less timing to get transactions done. So ultimately such a comprehensive participation with banks like, and these money exchangers underscores the auctions importance in maintaining economic stability. What do they need? That's exactly what they need and supporting international trade. Oh, well, of course, what are they doing? They're gearing to have support from international trade to do uh, what? Materials, just like they said earlier, the cement business, for instance. All of these things are gonna be having those sovereign guarantees. They're gonna have all of this. Currency auctions um, are noted to play a private uh, pivotal role in the, in the CBI strategy to control inflation, manage liquidity within the banking sector, facilitating the buying and selling of foreign currencies. These auctions meet the diverse needs of importers travelers and other entities requiring foreign exchange. Furthermore, they are instrumental in controlling Iraq's balance of payments, managing the inflow and outflow of foreign cash, and thereby, thereby contributing to the country's financial stability. So they're getting nothing but ready to go to an international system to where that eventually um, even our, the retail folks are gonna be a part of it. The successful conduct of these auctions not only reflects the CBI's adept management of monetary policy, but also signals positive trends in Iraq's economic health. They've had nothing but good things. Remember Article 4 compliant um, uh, consultations? They knocked it out of the park. One thing leads to another. They're just, they're just showing you that have they been working hard? Absolutely, 100%. It says this uh, expert, um, this is basically in, uh, this is in line with the government and the central bank's efforts as highlighted by experts who point out that the significance of Iraq's potential accession, that's the one I wanted to talk about, it says potential accession to the European Bank for Reconstruction. Such a move is expected to strengthen Iraq's financial position and foster partnerships with major global financial institutions. Okay. But hold on a minute, let's go back a little bit. That was today. So how in the world did they say that today um, and kind of muddy the waters when they say on March 20th, 2024, they say to us from TAFE Sammy's office, the finance ministry, uh, it says the Iraqi Fund for External Development announces, this is the headline, you guys, on the 20th of March, it's in our Patreon forum, patreon.com, at forward slash amendment crew, you can get to this. It says, uh, Iraq's accession to membership in the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. And, and that is, um, it was in the, in the news. And one other quote was, the Iraqi Fund for External Development in the Ministry of Finance announced that the Republic of Iraq has joined the membership of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development after the House of Representatives approved the accession law. So take it for what it's worth. Um, all the things that we see, um, I think that they muddy waters just to keep people on their back leg and keep them um, yeah, on their back foot. So in my view, um, it seems a bit odd that they were suggesting um, that they have the accession. They have yet to have a session, I mean because um, we saw that on March 20th that they have it. It says having the financial stability they have, the exchange rate will be able to bolster their economy and balances abroad. They've already told us that they will do that. Having the stability that they will have uh, that will come from opening to the world as noted by the international trade, having uh, comprehensive participation with banks and money exchangers in a legal environment is important in maintaining their economic stability while supporting um, international trade. So again, those are just little bits and pieces of uh, what they're doing and how they're doing it. And uh, it's fascinating to watch just how each and every one of these little bits and pieces of the puzzle coming together. It says the customs announces the marketing 
marketing again. Notice how we're, we're down to the wire now. Now they're marketing, they're selling it to the citizens. They are not only educating them about it, but now they're actually trying to sell it to them to make sure that they have an understanding. Uh, the Customs announces the marketing of the first transit consignment according to the ICECUTA system. Uh, it says Thursday, the marketing of the first transit consignment according to the ICECUTA system from the UMCASER to the treble border post. It says the marketing consignment consists of 10 trucks loaded with raw materials for the, for the detergent industry. I think phosphates? Aren't they in detergent? Okay. Um, and it had a weight of 200 tons, of, and it was from what? A Malaysian origin. So it's international trade, and they're marketing that. Um, and it says the authority statement affirmed, quote, its determination to provide all necessary facilities in full transparency for the success of the transit process between the state of Iraq and other neighboring countries. <clears throat> so the marketing aspect is... is is fascinating to me because um, that's what you see on TV every day, right? Made in Iraq, ba da 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 da. <laughs> made in the USA, made in China. It, it just marketing is going to be a big deal. <coughs> Excuse me. Al Sudani announces a move regarding the 2024 budget and confirms his keenness on the successful of the success of local governments. So. Um, Al Sudani announces a move regarding the 2024 budget and confirms the keenness of the success of the government. Um, he says Thursday, the start of setting the 2024 budget includes the schedules, including financial entitlements added to the Iraqi governance, while indicating the government's keenness to make the mission of local governments a full success. Uh, it says Al Sudani stressed that the government has made important strides in implementing its government program across ministries and governance, stressing that the evaluation of heads of administrative units and directorates of departments must be subject to practical programs away from quotas to avoid sending a negative message to the citizens and local governments must maintain communication with all segments of society in the government and focus on the services aspect because it represents the main concern of the citizens. There you go. Al Sudani, strictly, everybody needs to be on board. Get ready. Marketing's doing it. Now we're going to nail you guys down. Have it ready because it represents the main concern of the citizens. That's what their focus is. He goes on to say that stressing the start of setting the 2024 budget schedules, including the financial entitlement entitlements added to the governance that will be allocated to infrastructure. Infrastructure is a massive amount of spending. They're going to need to disperse monies. 2024, 23, 24, 25 budget has what? Has the investment side. When's it supposed to arrive? Next week. So we're going to find out uh, if that happens. So at the end of this, it says Al Sudani explains that the government is keen on making the mission of local governments a success. Reiteration. Despite the president's, <laughs> the president's, I'm sorry, uh, presence of trolls who do not like the vision of stability in the country, stressing that the correct management of public money will provide positive and correct indicators and requires working with a vision that takes into consideration the coming years and meeting entitlements. <laughs> I have to laugh. They even call them trolls. We get a few of those on the internet, don't we? Anyway, uh, let's see. We're just about done, you guys. Iraq warns the U.S. Treasury. I'd laugh. I go, yeah, Iraq warns the U.S. Treasury <laughs> All right. uh, to leave a dollar. And parliamentary finance, the exchange rate will continue to, to decline. All right. So the chairman of the parliamentary finance committee, Atwan al Atwani, he is the guy that says that Iraq has warned the U.S. Treasury of the sanctions policy and the, pol the possibility of Iraq converting to other currencies if they continued. Well, they already have. <laughs> Why are you warning us? It's their whole idea. <laughs> but anyway, while indicating that the exchange rates would continue to decline. Well, if he's thinking that the dinar is going to decline because of, of what they're doing, he's, they're wrong. He's, he's wrong. <laughs> or if he's thinking that what they're doing um, is that other currencies are going to take over from the dollar um, and that's going to be it. Well, 
There isn't any other countries that are going to be using the dinar at 13.10 to the U.S. dollar globally. They're just not going to do that. And why would why would anybody want to do business? They didn't, they didn't do it before last year. They didn't do it after the the Kuwaiti uh, conference, right? There was 30 billion on the table. Didn't even didn't do anything. Why? Because they didn't change the value of their currency. So why would they do it now? So this guy's warning us is uh, I think it's kind of silly. He goes on and adds that we delivered a message to the U.S. Treasury through the Central Bank of Iraq that if this policy continues, Iraq will deal in currencies other than the dollar. <laughs> and so pointing out that Iraq is awaiting an invitation to join the BRICS economic group. So they're waiting for an invitation. I thought they had one. I thought they were having a session, but they never did, have they? Well, they're waiting for an invitation. Iraq's waiting for an invitation from the BRICS. Well, do you think they're going to get one when they're at 1310? I mean, literally, that's it is kind of funny. <clears throat> They're not, as far as I'm concerned, and I could be wrong. The Ministry of Finance is awaiting approval of the budget schedule to launch financing for projects in all governments. That's <clears throat> that point right there, excuse me. <clears throat> the Ministry of Finance is awaiting approval of the budget schedules to launch financing for projects in all the governments. Well, that's what we're waiting for, and that's what we started this out with. Of course we are. Everybody's waiting for it, just like the Siam port. Just like the salaries, everything is waiting for what? The financing, those schedules. That's what it looks like. So he goes and points out Iraq needs to establish a cultural partnership between the private and public sector. Of course they do. It says in capital, in an implementation and management according to the principle of services in exchange for interest. And we must focus on maximizing non-oil revenues and developing various product productive sectors instead of existence, reliance on oil, and our constant emphasis on automating taxes and customs. So there you go. A lot of that stuff he did say it is true. So it's a little bit um, back and forth. That I, I don't know that I disagree with what he said there because that's, that's effectively what happened, is what happened. In those two sentences, the Ministry of Finance is awaiting approval and the, the, establish, uh, the need to establish a cultural partnership with uh, public and private sectors uh, and automating taxes and customs, obviously, hands down. But check it out. He says, regarding exchange rates, the head of the parliamentary finance confirmed that exchange rate will continue to decline according to current data. Right, exactly. Because once you guys go public and private and you adjust your real effective exchange rate, uh, the parallel market goes bye-bye and it does what? Um, the, do the dollar's pricing is gonna go down to the dollar. The dinar is going to get stronger, just like Al Sudani said. So ultimately, electronic payment schedule is sustainable growth, sustainable development, same thing. Raise the value of your currency. It's going to help make it easier for sustainable development and reducing the phenomenon of cash. So in other words, if, it, if you have a one-to-one -one ratio, you have significant uh, reduction in cash, do you not? I think you do. And even if it was at, at a previous era, for instance, uh, pick a number, 280, 322. They've been there. Iraq has been there before. Uh, would, wouldn't that uh, be a phenomenon of less cash in the economy? Of course it would. So there's a move towards, uh, towards marketing now and telling everyone about the electronic payments is the way to go, happening before our eyes. Marketing is for to get things uh, and issues in the public mind. It's all a good thing. Restoring confidence, a good thing. Al Sudani has been working on that. And uh, I think that we're in a, in a wonderful position. So enjoy. I hope you guys had a good evening on Friday night. And please, um, if you hit, hit that like button, smash it hard if you'd like. <laughs> um, but And subscribe, please, if you'd like. And uh, if you want to help keep the content going uh, from now into the future, because I'm sure there's going to be more to come um, even before and after, as we have before now, um, and after um, this investment uh, gets into a different uh, destination, um, we have the uh, PayPal, uh, Zelle, and Venmo. Oh, I appreciate it, you guys. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel. Or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. 
You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.